Welcome, everybody. It is the Paul Rodriguez Show. It is April 13th, 2021. Coming out of Studio 44, producer James on the in the building. Uh, what's happening, man? How you feeling? If I was on the building, I wouldn't be here. Were you, did I say on? I meant in. In the building, on the building. I mean, you're on top of it right now, the way you got that, uh, that board working. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. NFL news. Lots of stuff popping off. Uh, apparently, uh, NFL PA and teams, at least three teams, we'll identify them in a bit. Uh, have decided to forego the voluntary workouts. Wonder if that's going to impact their bonuses that are applied to voluntary workouts. We'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, some other stuff is going on. UFC, excuse me, One FC. Let me not disrespect the uh, Taiwanese corporation. One FC happening tomorrow. A couple of small fights landing on their platform. That'll be on TNT probably at the same time, about eight or nine. Uh, PM, which is a little bit different because I'm pretty sure they're broadcasting in uh, Taiwan, which is a lot different time zone. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be. I think they're going to start their undercard at uh, on Bleacher Report like they did last time. As far as what time the uh, fights will be debuting on TNT could be a little different. I think they had some scheduling issues last week too, James, because I tuned in like at 7 when they said they were going to start, but I think that may have been when they would go live on Bleacher Report. So I'll monitor that, see how things are faring up. That looks like, that does not look like, well, maybe it is. Yeah, yeah, that's tomorrow. That's, there's, the, there's the dates right there. 7 p.m. Eastern, which means 7.30 our time. Uh, how, do you, how do you pronounce it? I would say. Nastyukin. I would say Nastyukin. Yeah, Nastyukin. I think it's got to be like a Russian or Ukrainian name somewhere around there? One of, the, one of these two guys right here. It's the guy on the right, because yeah. I think Lee's the champion. Yeah. Lee, I think he's American and Korean. I think he has, like, dual citizenship. Anyways, uh, that'll be – we'll go, get a little bit more into that a little bit langer, later. So, yeah, he was Russian. Timothy. Timothy Nastyukin, the, the Russian. Looks pretty serious. They Don't they all? They <laughs> yeah, all look true. pretty intense. Going all the way back to um, uh, Fedor Emelianenko. Fyodor. However you want to say it. <laughs> I'm just reading in English. I don't know those different. I'm just giving you shit. I don't, I don't I, know I those. I say Fedor. I don't know those different uh, misshaped shapes that they have as letters. I'm pretty sure if you were Russian, you looked at our Arabic, link, Arabic uh, calendar, not calendar, uh, our uh, alphabet. I don't know why I said Arabic. Uh, I think it has a genealogy that goes back to, or an etymology that goes back to, there, to Arabic. Anyways, not getting off on a tangent. I think you were thinking of font, right? Maybe. Arabic. Maybe. It could be anything. My, my brain's a little distracted right now. Uh, apparently, something just popped up in my Twitter timeline before we get into that, uh, to the sports. Uh, Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> did you know that he's, that he was, has, is in married to Brenda Song? I just found out yesterday. Yes, apparently they had a kid today. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think that's kind of weird? Like, Brenda Song, I think she's like 30. So that means like she was growing up watching Macaulay Culkin. Gross. It's kind of weird. And Macaulay Culkin looks like he's still 30, and I think he's like in his early 40s. Shout out to him. Shout out to them for uh, welcoming a new kid, a healthy child. Shout out to them. Uh, the sports world is getting a little crazy. Uh, NFL players have decided to uh, not participate in their voluntary workouts, and they're deeming the that COVID is still too much to take as a risk and for them to mitigate that risk. Uh, I believe three teams have gone ahead and decided to do that. Uh, I believe uh, one of the teams is Denver for sure. They were the first one to come out and through the NFLPA indicate that they would not be participating in voluntary workouts. And then the second team was the Seattle Seahawks, which that news pretty much broke oh, about 10 minutes after Denver set out their press release. And I have I believe that there is going to be a third team who's already out there uh, I want to take a snippet of this tweet that's at the top of my list here uh, in, in regarding to COVID. And it's, I don't want to say it's anything weird. I think we're really out of that weird phase. We were really into it last year about this time. Uh, but it belie I believe the third team will be Tampa Bay. They will be foregoing their voluntary workouts, which makes sense for them since they're an older team. And I believe last year they're like, hey, look, if we want a Super Bowl, and we didn't go through OTAs physically. We did everything virtually through an offseason. I think we can run it back and do it again. Oh, wait, excuse me. We can go for two 
we can go for two again and uh, get that Super Bowl. Uh, but one one thing that I did notice here with um, whoops, one of the and so all of that is due due to COVID. Yeah, it's kind of like look, man. These players don't want to go. Number one, if they don't live in the city they play for, because you bounce around so much. They don't want to have to travel away from their family to go work out when they're voluntarily. And they're like, they're voluntary, but they're not voluntary. So a lot of times what will happen is these, the front office wants the players on site so they can kind of like monitor and keep track and make sure everybody's healthy and gets a treatment. And basically they just want to have a little bit of control over the players because the players have a good amount of control uh, with with their contracts. And so the, what they do is they say, look, if you show up to this amount of workouts over the summer, we'll pay you an extra, you know, few tens of thousands of dollars. Well, for the players, they're like, yeah, I'm going to be working out anyways. I might as well be working at the facility because it's going to be like the best opportunity for me to like, you know, number one, train. And number two, I'll have, you know, access to all the other perks. I can eat there. I don't have to like pay for food outside. If I need treatment, I can get treatment there, excuse me. And, uh, you know, pretty sure their buddies are going to be there also. And what the players are saying is we don't want to do that again. Well, what's the repercussion? The repercussion is probably the NFL is going to say, fine. If you want to invoke your COVID mitigation by not attending voluntary workouts, we're going to treat the season of 2021 like we did 2020. You're not going to be able to eat together at tables. We're going to go through all the same mitigation policies that we had enacted for 2020. And it's kind of like a tit for tat almost. It's like, well, fine. If y'all don't want to work out, then we're going to make y'all follow all these COVID guidelines throughout the whole football season. And I think what the players are saying is is that we're going to call your bluff. We're going to say, look, we're not going to come to it. We're going to cite, uh, you know, we're going to cite COVID is the reason. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if y'all really want to go through all of this mitigation through the season. When there's going to be players, there's going to be people being vaccinated. You know, and what really should happen is everybody, all the sports leagues, from male to female, and even like Division One college football all the way to Division Three, like all sports athletes should be getting vaccinated. We've already had the elderly get their vaccinations. We've already had, like in Texas, it, it's pretty much available for everybody 18 and up. So if you're 18 and up, and if you're going to be playing a sport professionally, you probably should be probably should be vaccinated. Unless, like what's saying here, released by Tom Pelissero, Tom Pelissero saying, the NFL informed clubs today, any team employee who refuses a COVID-19 vaccination without, quote unquote, a bona fide medical or religious ground will be barred from tier one and tier two status and thus have restricted access within the team facility and not work directly with players per sources. <clears throat> now, that didn't say players. That said employees of the club. That And employees of the club are not considered players. Really? No. This is like your um, cafeteria people. This is your, your um, janitorial staff, your team trainers, your water guys. Your, uh, you know, people who are support staff, the people who are loading and unloading the the uh, the equipment. So, so, what do they call the player? Like, what are the players considered? They're players. They players, have their really? they have their own. Yeah, the NFLPA okay. is the NFL Player Association. Yeah, yeah. So that's their union. So whenever thing, whenever there's something that the NFLs want to oh, have okay. file a grievance, they go through their union. And like, what the players are really considered of, you had to put a, a definition. I would see them as commodities. Because they they have a talent that they're p- compensated for, and you know you could all, maybe you can call them contractors. That may be a better way to describe them because they're probably ten ninety nine employees if I had to guess, but they're under that contract, and so the only way there for to be any sort of guarantee and compensation it comes in the form of that contract. So that you know that's a legal binding agreement between the two parties to get the money properly paid out. That's why Dak Prescott's issue was such a hot topic was because he was franchise tag last year, which means the day after he signed the franchise tag, they put 31 plus million dollars in the bank account. But what does that mean for the 
following season, it means nothing. Like, he got hurt, and if his injury would have been catastrophic, which it was, but if it would have been career-ending, he would have only made $31 million in the money he made off the field, and that's it. He wouldn't have been able to, to go and get this $160 million co- contract. That's why these players want fully guaranteed contracts at signing. That's why it's important for them to get that money. And like in the NBA, like the majority of the NBA contracts are like fully guaranteed. So when you see LeBron or Kawhi and they sign like $205 million contract, like, yeah, those superstars, they're getting all that money no matter what happens. Pretty crazy. So the COVID, the COVID stuff is rearing its ugly head again. I think this is going to be a story. The older players don't want to go to these voluntary workouts, and most times they're probably just going to get, like, some treatment. Um, the only way I see this being a non-issue is if elite players came out and said, we're not going to them, and there's nothing y'all are going to do about it, and we're going to move forward with the season. And that's about it. But that's, that's probably not going to happen. But this is going to hurt, like, your late round draft picks, your, you know, un, your free agents who come in on like veteran minimums, rookie minimums, because they're not going to be able to like get that extra cash that's guaranteeing by just going to work out. And I'm, I'm curious how they're going to play, how that's going to like play out in the long run is like, are they going to honor the contracts? And if you're a player who wants to go work out, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to go work out, but then you're going to have to be worried about all the questions and being bombarded while all your players or your teammates are not at the facility. And you don't want to put yourself there. So it's like yeah. you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. It's kind of a tough situation if you do decide to go, you know, go go work out. If you do live in the city. Like Tom probably lives in Florida somewhere in a nice house that he may be either renting or bought, you know, at a very good price. But Tom's like, I'm going to go work out in the park. I'm not going to work out at the facility. Hey Bruce, where's Tom today? Oh, they're not. They're not asking the coaches. <laughs> they're gonna be like, we're not. We don't discuss. Well, they're gonna say we don't discuss players. What well, they're gonna ask other players who are gonna be there, and they're gonna have to like answer the question, and they don't want to put themselves in that situation. Bruce is probably at some bar somewhere, just like throwing him back right now. Who? I mean, who knows? Trying to find where he's getting his next uh, Super Bowl tattoo. <laughs> you think he'll get a second one? <laughs> what if he gets right, like? Dude. What if he gets another one like right next to it? <laughs> Or right, right, because it's on his left shoulder, I believe. He might have a whole back piece by the time Tom Brady retires. I don't know, man. I think if Tom gets another ring, he's gonna hang it up. Yeah, I, th- I think, I think, I know he wants to play till forty five, but dude, by the start of next season, he'll be forty four. Think about that. He'll you be. Think 40. his magic's gonna start running out? No, nah, man, not with this. Not with the team they have put around him. Not at all. And now they have a true running back. They signed yesterday. They signed. Giovanni Bernard, who is practically James White 2.0, who can catch out of the backfield. It's like LT back in the day when he was with the Jets and with the Chargers, and he could just – any route – you're. it's like run your receivers and your tight ends wherever you want, and then you'll have – you're running back on an option route into the flat. Dunk it off right there. You're going to have a quick pass rush? Cool. We're going to go ahead and run our running back on a fake dive – and he's going to be open right here in the flat, and we're just going to dump it off every single time. So they're going to have Leonard Fournette and Giovanni Bernard? They're going to have Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones, and Ooh. Giovanni Bernard. Man. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Or what if – I'm fucking winning my fantasy league this what? year. No, you're, right no you're not, dude. <laughs> you, you're, no, you didn't even get your lineup set half the year in, our, in the recon league. Well, be, that's because um, – so in my main fantasy league, we put in $100. Okay. So after a while, like, and I was already, Big I, was, ball is over I was just, yeah. I mean, we play for a lot, I and mean, I was already just frustrated. Like, I had one of the most shittiest seasons I had, and I was like, Did you draft Aaron Rodgers? No, that's why I didn't draft. I hardly draft any pack. I don't think there's I no reason to draft any Packers besides J- uh, Rodgers or Jones or Adams. No, dude. Mm-mm. What? No, I don't think so. Well, all right. During the break, I'm going to look up <laughs> average fantasy points from Devontae Adams this, okay. this season. Okay. Now, it depends on, like, where you're picking them and where you're going to be picking them at. But yeah, you know, let, me, let me let you get back to it. Okay. No, no I'm done. Oh, that was it? Yeah. Now, you, you said you're going to win your fantasy, but you're not going to draft any Packer players. 
I didn't say I was going to. You asked if I drafted any this That's past right. year. That's right. That's right. I didn't say if I was going to draft any this year. Okay. If you have the number one overall pick, are you picking a Packer? No. Hey, what about if you have pick number 10? Are you picking a Packer? Depends on who's available. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, De- if Devontae Adams is available at 10, are you picking him? Yeah. That's way too high. <laughs> it's way too high. All right, y'all. It is a fifth, actually 18 minutes after the hour. Let's get into a break real quick. Uh, on the break, James is going to justify his why you should <laughs> – pick or he should pick or they should pick or someone should pick Devontae Adams. We bet.
Welcome back, everybody. It is the Paul Rodriguez Show. Getting back into the mix a little bit. Tennessee State hiring George, Eddie George. I, I, and we talked about it yesterday a little bit, but getting back into it a little bit more today. Um, he said he felt reinvigorated after, like, getting that offer. So I'm a little, I'm like, Eddie, what, like, what were you doing before? <laughs> like, you just, like, going to Ohio State games and sign autographs or what? Now you get a coaching job and you're invigorated? Uh, UFC one, let's pivot to UFC. I'm sorry. I keep Uh-oh. saying this damn thing. <laughs> Dana White's gonna be like, what the hell's going on with you? What's wrong with you? You can't do it. I'm like, Dana, chill out, man. Just take it easy. Uh, so one FC going on tomorrow. Uh, let's look at the lineup. Looks like the main card is going to be Janet Todd versus Anne Leinhogsted from Norway. The American versus looks a female fight in the, what the hell's Ann Adam weight. Is that like is that like one hundred and five pounders? It says Adam weight Muay Thai. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be a Muay Thai fight, not a, not an MMA fight. Okay. Adam okay. Adam weight, and then this is going to be Christian Lee, in an MF, MMA championship fight for the lightweight world ha- lightweight championship versus Timothy Nastyukin, the Russian. Yeah, I really haven't seen Adam weight in Muay Thai, so I'm really curious what that weight class is. Uh, here we go. Then we got to like make sure it's women's and all that. So li- trying to look to see if there's 102 pounders. That's boxing. Yeah. Mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts. What would be, wouldn't it be Muay Thai? Weighing less than 105. So yeah, the 105ers. Wow. So they got to be little ladies. They got to be little girls. Not late, not girls, but ladies. That's, I mean, but that's a different kind of style. That's a different kind of style, right? Like, what is Muay Thai? It's like it's not kickboxing, but it's not MMA. It's like more like judo and and kickboxing together. Would you say Muay Thai? Yeah, because uh, they're like it's throws. Just, it's like yeah. It's, well, no, I don't think they do throws. It's they just striking. Um, they call it the seven seven limbed sport. So it's like yeah, it's all striking: elbows, knees, kicks, okay. punches. Yes. So nothing on the ground. No. Okay. It's so all stand makes, up. That's that makes but sense. They, they throw down over there in Thailand. Man, that's a, man. that's a yeah. That's a different kind of. That's a different kind yeah. of style of fighting. A lot of um, a lot of the fighters they'll go and uh, spend time over there in Thailand, just uh, you know, getting accustomed because it translates very well to MMA. Yeah. Just learning how to strike like that, you know. Yeah. So big fights. You think that's gonna be? You think that's gonna draw like you did last time? Or do you think there's gonna be any kind of controversy like we had with the uh, Eddie Alvarez? Disqualification, I think. Maybe that's why they put that Muay Thai fight spur or first before the main card because it's a little bit more controlled. Yeah, um, yeah it's the art of eight limbs is okay. what it was, not seven. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> yeah, it, even number, right? You got two of everything. Yeah, I was going to say uh, <laughs> seven. I was counting that headbutt. <laughs> yeah, maybe that yeah, headbutt. Nothing in the back of the head, though. You, yeah. get, you get a red card. Yeah. So that will be going on tomorrow night. I believe it starts at 7.30. On Bleacher Report, and then the main card will go off uh, probably later, maybe 8.30, given each fight maybe about an hour, plus all the promos and everything they're going to be running. It shows there's only, they have a lead card, which has three fights, and then there's a main card that has two fights. Yeah, so the lead card is going to be on Bleacher Report. Bleacher Report. So it's going to be streaming, mm. and then the main card will be on TNT. That's the way they ran it last time. Nice. But I'm interested to see in that lightweight between Christian Lee because that lightweight, those are 55ers, right? Um, Just yes, compared to the UFC? Yeah, yeah. That would be 55ers? Yeah. Yeah, so that would be, those are, who's the 55 champ at UFC right now? 55. I think that's the vacant one. Is that the um, one that's vacant? Yeah, that's what, uh, May 15th going down in H-Town. Michael Chandler versus. But that's for the, that's for the title? Yeah. Okay. Ole, Oliveira. Um, yeah. So that May 15th will determine who's going to win that belt. Mm-hmm. 262 in Houston. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm uh, I'm going to be interesting to I'm going to be interested to see if Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a good fight. Yeah, um that's why Nate Nate was like, "Yeah, they're they're uh, he's like, I'm headlining a card in Houston. He's like they're going to be fighting for my belt." <laughs> I was like, bro, you realize that makes no That's, sense, right? But yeah, I was going to say, he's a 70 year, right? He's a 170 year? No, no, he, he's fought at lightweight. Oh, he's yeah. fought at 55 before? Yeah. I think I think that fight with uh, Leon Edwards is, let me see. Let me I'll go back. You just had it open. Yeah. I think that's going to be at at uh, welterweight. I don't know. I mean, I bet Nate Diaz probably walks around at like 170. And that's why he can easily get to the 155 frame. So welterweight, yeah. 
Yep. One seventy. One seventy. Yeah. I don't know, man. What do you think about what do you think about that fight going in? Do you think that fight? Do you think the Diaz Edwards could outshine the title fight? Because it's going to be five rounds. Dude, uh, Michael, man, I'm I'm pretty big on Michael Chandler, man. He's uh he's done work, and him and Eddie Eddie Alvarez, they've had wars over there in Bellator. Really? Yeah, he he's a good fighter. That's why um he came over. I forgot who he beat in his last fight. Starts the guy in the first round under like a minute, I want to say, and so that's why Dana was like, okay, bank it, bank it, uh, you know, lightweight. And Oliveira, he's a Brazilian. Um. Uh, yeah, 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 he's so, some Brazilian yeah. American. That's that's gonna be interesting, man. I'm, I want to see. I want to see how that's going to just fare out. And they're both like experienced fighters. I mean, Charles Oliveira is 30 and 8, and then Chandler's 22 and 5. Yeah. Dang, Chandler's got a 71 and a half inch reach. That's that's pretty long for 55 ers He's got to be what? Like, is he like 5'9, 5'10? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. I know you keep going back and forth. Sorry. I'm going crazy over here. He's 5'8. Five, <laughs> he's five eight, so they're both about 5'8. Five yeah. 5'7, five 5'8. Five that's pretty long for a 5'7 fighter. Have a 71 and a half inch reach. Where are you going now? Now I'm just making sure that it's for a title. I thought, you, oh, okay. I thought you, I thought, I thought, I thought it was. I didn't think it was. I, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here for UFC lightweight title. Oh, so it is. That's the, uh, for, that's vacant. the vacant, uh, Khabib's title. I thought could be, oh, yeah, that lightweight. Is? Yes, that is. Okay. Okay. Could we have, some, could we have man. some major crossing over going on? Like what? Could we have maybe if, if I don't know, if, if Nate I'm, beats Leon Edwards, so what I'm thinking about here, what I'm thinking about is if Nate wins, I think Nate gets a shot at that 55 belt. I mean, and then Connor goes down because, like, if Connor loses, if Connor loses to Poirier, and Nate beats Edwards, Nate fights the winner of Oliveira Chandler, and wins the 55 belt, I could totally see. A big fight between Nate Diaz and and McGregor, McGregor for the title for the lightweight for the oh, lightweight dude that would the thought of it'll that it'll be a trilogy right it'll be a trilogy for a title yes it would be huge Dana White would be huge salivating at the mouth for that especially if especially if Masvidal wins because the way I'm looking at this is if Masvidal wins they're gonna have a rematch between him and Usman it'll be the trilogy and then if Nate wins Nate beats. Chan, whoever wins, Nate gets the 55 belt. And then Connor goes down to 55 to face Nate Diaz for a trilogy fight and a title. And then you have, I mean, I don't think you'd put both those fights on the same card, but you'd have a trilogy with Diaz, I'm sorry, a trilogy with Diaz and Connor, and then a trilogy with Usman and Masvidal. For the, for the 70 time. Oh, dude. That'd be huge. That'd be huge. Very big. I don't know, dude, because Dana White's kind of funky with the way he does rematches. Like, he'll give it to you sometimes. I mean, if it's McGregor, you're guaranteed. If you want a rematch, you just lost, buddy. All right, here, here you go. But if, let's put it this way. If if that Masvidal fight goes four rounds and Masvidal catches Usman, he, I don't, however, he just he catches him and knocks him out or makes him tap. And... And he wins. There's going to be a third fight because there's no way Usman dominate, dominates Masvidal in Dubai, and then Masvidal catches Usman in the third or fourth round and knocks him out or makes him tap. There's they'll be like, no, they they need to they need to go for a third time. The same thing with Diaz and and Connor for a title. That's too big to like dismiss. But the question is, is like, what if Connor beats Poirier? And Nate beats the winner of Chandler Oliveira, and Masvidal catches Usman, and Connor's like, "No, nah, I want the 70. McGre- uh, Masvidal McGregor won. Yeah, dude, big. Yeah, they 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 got to do it um, first for, for the 70 title. You got the two biggest shit talkers, and, and Masvidal likes to do it quietly. He doesn't like to say who he fights. Yeah, he's like, oh, I don't make that dude famous. Well, he's he's more famous than you right now. Well, he did that to Ben Askren just because he right, but you know, he, he did it to Usman too. Athlete. Yeah, true, true. He did that to Usman without really like <laughs> he was like he knew who he was talking about, <laughs> and he was doing it on the big one of the biggest platform on Rogan. Yeah, McGregor. I mean, you know, I I said I'm going or I'm, I think that Poirier was going to win, 
But McGregor needs to start. He needs to win, dude, in order to, like, stay because, like, we just explained yeah, there's he, a whole lot of options. Well, he has three fights left. So, he's there's three fights. There's three fights right there. This Poirier fight, Masvidal at 70. And see here, I'm walking this line. Like, I'm walking this line into the middle of 2022. I'm saying Nate Diaz starts s- just smoking the 55ers. And Diaz goes to fight Masvidal and captures that 70 belt. And then it's the middle of July of 2022, and it's champ versus champ with McGregor and 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 Diaz for the mm. 55 belt or the 70 belt. Yeah. One could only hope. That'd One be could huge. Only hope. Yeah, and it's it a trilogy. Shit, come on, man! You're getting me all excited over here, man. <laughs> so it's my job. That's what I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing: getting the people excited, getting them hyped up, about high fired up in this shit right here. Let's go. All right, 38 minutes after the hour. Let's get back to it. Uh, let's get into a break, and then we, you know, let we'll let uh, producer James simmer down a little bit, and then uh, I don't know. Talk about more stuff coming up. We got the draft party coming up April 29th. Getting some stuff figured out for that. We think we're gonna have a really good, productive show. Some new things coming into the mix. Um, I'm excited for y'all to see them. Producer James behind the scenes making some big stuff happen. Uh, we need to get the wizard on the line for some artwork, maybe some graphics. A little bit animated. See what he can do. Something. Yeah. <laughs> if you're out there, wizard, we've been we've been missing you, bro. We gotta get you in the mix. We'll be back.
Welcome back, everybody, after that long break. We appreciate you staying with us a little bit. Let's get into a little bit of NFL draft. Just want to shout out the Paul Rodriguez draft party. April 29th, once again, we'll be here live uh, from 6.30 until the end of the draft. And whoever Tampa Bay picks last, hopefully it may be Travis Etienne. But we'll get into uh, who is going where and where we think they may be going. Uh, Mel Kuyper Jr. released his draft 2.0 today. And the biggest news that kind of struck everybody was how he was going to have the Dallas Cowboys trade back to 15 with the New England Patriots, the evil empire back at it again. Uh, and then I guess James just missed my cue again. <laughs> the evil empire back at it again. <laughs> is that the right one? What is that? I don't know what that is. Pick it again. That's uh, the intro. And I'm all over the place, man. Oh, and the intro is still you playing. Said play it. No, no, the intro was so the intro, the intro was playing with that. Yeah, okay. you had that so, bed still live. So what, what were you saying? You know what I was saying. That's right. Bill Belichick's coming for the Dallas Cowboys number one spot. I totally goofed that one. It's all good though. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know where my head's at. <laughs> <laughs> we have some news coming <laughs> where uh, producer James is diligently putting things together on the fly. Uh, call him Marty McFly. Not really, though. Uh, yeah, so that struck me as odd because New England, it sounds like they want a quarterback. And in order for them to do so, I think they're hoping Justin Fields falls to them at 10. But in, in all reality, what if San Francisco picks Fields when they go to their pro day tomorrow? Because Justin Fields, they're gonna, like Ohio State has a, a pro day tomorrow, and San Francisco didn't go – to his draft day a couple weeks ago. They went to Mac Jones in Alabama. So now they're going to go see a kid not as tall as Mac Jones, but 6'3", 225, runs a 4'4", 40. Threw for more touchdowns than Mac Jones at Ohio State collectively. Now, Jones only had one season, granted, but his season was an all-SEC campaign. Last year, Justin Fields had a five win year and he barely escaped the big 10 championship against Northwestern. But I think the just throw everything out the book and I mean, throw out everything out the window and look at the, the body of work for Justin Fields coming out of high school. Everybody knew him and Trevor Lawrence were going to be one and two going into college. And once their college careers were done, we're going to be one and two going to the NFL draft. Well, now fields is slipping for whatever reason. And I think if, if New England wants Fields and they don't want Trey, Trey Lance at North Dakota State, it sounds like a smart move for New England to go to 10 and take Dallas' spot. But I think Dallas is also – they're going to lose the, one of the – they're going to lose at the, at the top corner market. They're going to lose the kid out of Virginia, J.C. Horn out of South Carolina, and Patrick Sertan out of Alabama. I don't think they're going to be there at 15. But – the offensive lineman Slater out of Northwestern may be there. Or the offensive tackle from, from Notre Dame, I, I, his name escapes me at this time. And so if that's, the, if that's the MO right now for the Dallas Cowboys is to get an offensive lineman out of, out of anywhere in the draft, the Big Ten last year that Notre Dame played in the SEC, uh, it's, yeah, it's not going to be... <laughs> that that's definitely what you're looking at. It's definitely not Notre Dame of uh, the United States. That looks like Notre Dame of Bellicombe. Carry on out of Italy. <laughs> so uh, the best the best way I think we're gonna see if Dallas is smart, they stay at ten and do not draft Kyle Pitts, even if he's there at ten. But if all the corners are gone and I mean the top three corners, the ones I mentioned, and if there's an offensive lineman there, Slater or the kid out of Notre Dame, one of the two, you got to take him. You got to take, you got to rebuild that offensive line. It's been eight years since you've drafted, you know, a quality offensive lineman. It's time to rebuild. Maybe, no, eight, 20. Zach Martin was the last one they drafted out of Notre Dame. Well, maybe it's time you re-up and do it again. That's, that's the way I see it. But if not, the evil empire does their thing again, and they go get. They gotta do it this time. <laughs> they go get their quarterback of the future, Justin Fields. And I could totally see Justin Fields being like 
I'm going to play the bad guy. I'm going to be the heel. I'm going to go in and I'm going to resurrect the New England Patriots to their forum where they had Tom Brady, the original, the original bad guy, who's now in Tampa. Well, he's a pirate now, too, so it's kind of interesting. We better not get a copyright hit because you play that that many damn times. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Tom Brady, he's doing his thing. I think, uh, Robert Kraft decided to open up the, the bank and say, Hey, look, uh, Bill's like, uh, Bob, uh, we need to go spend a lot more money if we're going to go ahead and return to our former glory there. But yeah, I don't know if Bill's going to do it. Bill, Bill has to do his thing in a, in a, in a manner where he spent over $130 million guaranteed on the first day of, you know, free agency. So shout out to him to do that. I think it went more like, hello. <laughs> Hello, what? No, because you said he called. He called him. Right. Do you think that music is the drop? <laughs> yeah. Do you think they call wherever they're wherever they're like on the line, and it's like, uh, please hold. Yeah. You're supposed to hit the music. You open your eyes, you James. Be cracking up over here, man. It's like, uh, please hold for Coach Belichick. Uh, yes. Uh, Justin, this is Bill Belichick with the New England Patriots. We're going to be drafting you 10th overall in the uh, 2021 draft. He's all, he's all, why is that music playing? <laughs> he's like, does a Disney contract come with that? I don't know. So why do you sound like Senator Palpatine? Because <laughs> he is. He's got that hoodie on. Yeah, true. I, I, and I'm, a, I'm a closet Patriot fan just because I like winners. Like, uh, I, I'm a closet Oklahoma fan. Because I like winners. I oh. like people who win. I don't care. I know where we are. Shout out to Coach Sark. I mean, I got you, dude. When you start winning, I'll be a closet Longhorn fan. It's a 758. That's right. I don't <laughs> care. We got we had time for days. We just had a 10-minute break. We got some more news coming for y'all on the flip side. Uh, let's get into that real quick as we pivot. Uh, so apparently some new information has dropped. And this isn't nothing new. There's a relationship between... Uh, Francis Ngannou and Iron Mike Tyson. I guess they probably posted a photo together, right? Yeah, I was kind of waiting for you to... Yeah, there you go. There okay. it is. Uh, and it, apparently, Tyson Fury had something to say. Uh, and I Read that for me, James, because I can't see So it. he said, uh, at Mike Tyson, after I smash Anthony Joshua, I'll which, roast that guy also. Which isn't going to happen. At Francis Ngannou, easy work. And then Francis apparently had uh, a response... And again, Francis isn't really, uh, he doesn't strike me as a big shit talker. No. But uh, he had some words for Tyson Fury. Definitely lets his uh, talking, you know. He lets his work. Yeah. He lets his work do his talking. So do you see a bloodied uh, Tyson Fury there? That's from the Wilder fight. And he's basically saying, if this guy, Deontay Wilder, did this to you, what do you think I would do? And that, I mean, I think Tyson Fury was looking at the relationship between Tyson and, and Nganu as like in a boxing sphere. Like he, Tyson Fury is looking at this merely as just boxing. And Nganu is like, no, 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 no. He's looking at this as an MMA, in an MMA sphere. He's like, oh, we can box, but then I'm going to put you on the ground and I'm going to handle my business on the ground while you're literally shitting your pants. Dude, these guys... It, it's not it, the same. It's yeah, and it's never thought about in that sense. It's uh, the boxer is never going to go to the to the MMA world, in no. my opinion, simply because, I mean, it's uh, you know you're one dimensional when you're talking about boxing with uh, just the punches. I mean, you have to worry about the guy shooting in, taking you down. You know, all of that. Like the sweet science is literally just it's. It, it's just all messed up once you start uh, adding right. in the kicks. That's only the if you. That's only that. if you introduce, or that's only if you allow the MMA aspect of it. But if you just stay in one arena, like if if Tyson Fury kept it just boxing, and so did Ngannou, Ngannou would be destroyed. It, he would just. He would just. He, just, he couldn't get close enough. Yeah. You're talking about six nine versus six four. Fury was able to stay away from Wilder, who was 6'9", and they were both 6'9". And so that's the thing is, like, Fury is obviously a better boxer than probably Wilder and Joshua. But, man, if this if you let them go into an MMA ring, like if this was on the street and they met up and nobody was around, Wilder, I mean, 
Tyson Fury would be like laying in a puddle of his own blood. You think so? Yeah. Are, did you not see <laughs> what he did to Stipe? And Stipe is like among the MMA community, arguably the best heavyweight that ever lived. He destroyed. Not he, arguably, he is. Okay, that's arguably up to for discussion. Like I said, and so getting getting that understanding of the game could go to the ground, and we all we both saw it live, and Ganu learned how to learn the basics of wrestling. He would totally like annihilate the Gypsy King if it went to the ground. <laughs> Uncle Joey, man, we gotta get him. A, we gotta get him a CPAP machine, man. Oh, Uncle Joey. Yeah, uh, bo- boxers going over to MMA, man. It's it's a uh, it's a wrap, dude. But uh, if it got, if Ngannou went to go fight Fury for twenty five million, it would sell. It would sell. It would fucking sell. It would I'd sell. be right would, here watching it. Yeah, I know. I know you. I know you'd be right here watching it because I'd be. I'm not buying that Ruiz fight though. You buying food though? I'm not buying the Ruiz fight. Buy food. If you bought food for Fury and Ngannou, I'd be here. Well, of course, man. You just you, that's it's like. James, you're James. You're like the total dad. You're like, yeah, I gotta go. Like, you know, take care of the kids. But uh, if you got food, I'll show up. <laughs> gotta feed all those kids. Line up like you're in the lunch line. <laughs> no, I'm talking about you. You're like, oh, you, okay. like you're probably not eating too much around the kids. But like when you get food around, like, hey, y'all got something going on? Yeah, you got food? Yeah, we got food. <laughs> all right, I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I gotta make sure I have something to go worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, t- eight two minutes after the hour. Um. Tyson Fury, Mike Tyson exhibition. What do you think happens? Tyson Fury, Mike Tyson? Yeah. What do you think happens? <clears throat> I think Mike Tyson gets handled. <laughs> Bro. Really? Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. If Mike Tyson can hit you for real, if you give Mike Tyson time to hit you for real, you, man, Tyson with his speed and with, Listen, he's gonna get inside of he's Bro, gonna get inside of. You're Tyson letting Fury. those thirty minutes IG stories get to your head. Of Mike Tyson working 30, out 30 seconds. There, yeah, thirty seconds. Oh, okay, I was like thirty <laughs> they minutes. Said thirty minutes. Okay, you, you're letting those thirty second IG stories of Mike Tyson working out, preparing for uh, Roy Jones Jr. get to your head. And no, maybe, maybe. But what I did, what I did, let it get to me is that I saw Wilder hit Fury as hard as he could in his head, but Fury never went after the body. And Tyson Fury's body is soft. And what does Mike Tyson do well? True. He chops you down, and when your guard is down enough, he's going to put that overhand right over your over your mouth and knock you out. And he didn't do that with, with Roy Jones. They just kept it body. But I think Mike knew. Mike knew going in that fight, Roy was like, he he's not a killer anymore. But for some reason, whatever Custom Auto did to Tyson, he's he can turn on the killer switch. He just... He just changes. You just see his body language. It's like the killer's on. It's like, yeah, he is. Like when he said post fight, he was all like, um, he's like, I've been out of boxing for 15 years and he quit boxing for five years, but ain't nobody care about my ass. <laughs> when did he say that? <laughs> right after the fight. Oh, and Roy did the Roy Jones feud? Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. just true, though. Yeah. It is true. And listen, man, if he fights, if he does an exhibition with Holyfield, you don't think he's going to remember that ear getting chomped down in 90, whatever it was, 93? I bet you he gives him a real hook, quick hook to the back of the ear. Like, you remember this? Ha! Ha! What if you bit the other one? Oh, man, he ain't going to bite no ears. <laughs> he's too short to bite Evander six, three years. And he's getting high before and after the fight. How do you think? The, uh, they're That's not testing, said? you think? No, wait, no. Nah, not for the exhibition. You think Triller's testing? <laughs> Who? The exactly, he, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Nobody's testing. They don't have Jeff Jeff Nowitzki he's over like, there. He's got. Uh, he's like Mike Tyson's. Like the only reason, however he talks, I don't know how he speaks. I never want to have to face Tyson. He's like that impression sucked. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right, Mike. It probably did suck. With Dave Tan cool. He he doing my impression <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I'll be like, well, there. Here's his address. He's actually. I'm like, here you go, Mike. He's like, he's sorry. He's like, come here, boy. <laughs> Have a conversation. Come outside, James. I got something <laughs> for you. <laughs> what do you think he would? What do you think he would do if he like? He's like, the impression was okay. What if he like? Why he like? He was gonna go like have a conversation, and he's like, the impression was okay. I'd probably still be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Any probably anybody would he's probably all, be scared. It wasn't but the best. It was. 
I wonder who does the best Mike Tyson impersonation. I've heard some good ones. Really? Yeah. Um, heard good ones. You know what? I'm. I just can't get off of. I can't get away from is when Rashad Evans did his dog bark for Mike Tyson. Oh yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Remember I showed you that? Yeah. I was like, oh my! I was like, it sounds like a real dog. Yeah. I was like, even Mike was like, do that again, because he couldn't believe it. I don't know. I'll, I'll take DMX dog bark any day over everybody. Shout out to DMX, RIP. Yep. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. That was uh, that was crazy. That was a crazy forty eight hours because, you know how you know how the internet does, and then, yeah, it was crazy. But our rest in peace to DMX. Fifty years old, man. Uh, it's an icon growing up in, in uh, I mean, how, how old were you? You were in, like, what? I was uh, in high school. High school, right. Yeah, I was, uh, so when Rough Rider Anthem came out, I was uh, 15. Yeah, I was 15, and I had just made, like, varsity football as a sophomore. And I was like, I was, like that was one of the, I had a, I had a disc, man. For all you kids out there watching um, you know, we didn't have music on our phone on demand like we do now, but I had a disc man and one of the CDs, like you had a library. You remember you had like sleeves of CDs and it sounds like we were talking like eight tracks for when we were growing up. Anyways, Rough Riders was one of those, was one of those CDs and it was a single. It was like, I was too cheap. Like I was broke. I didn't have no money. So I had like one, had like two songs on this one disc and uh, DMX Rough Rider Anthem was, was one of them. And it was like, I remember to this day, like I'm on, I'm getting on the bus and like, you weren't dope. Like you weren't cool unless you had like over the ear headphones listening to your disc man and, you know, vibe into the song. And like, there it was like DMX was just like rough ride anthem. And it's like, you know, getting going, getting on the bus. We're traveling to land passes. I got a window seat, you know, think your big stuff, 15 varsity football. Like that's your whole world in small town America. And uh, we go to Lampasas, and you know you got to change your change your mindset whenever you're going to play that that very violent game of football. You got to turn and, that uh, switch, like my type. Yeah, like for me, it took like I don't I didn't have I didn't have that. This is a little story mode, real quick. I didn't have the ability to just like turn it on and turn it off. Like for me, it was a process. It was a deliberate process, and for me, it was like going into the locker room. For home games, it's like going into the locker room, getting in my locker, like taking out my pads, putting them at the feet of my locker, and me like laying back into it, like just sitting there. Music's playing. I'm in my like, you know, shorts and T-shirts. And everybody's doing their own thing, but like I have my headphones on. I'm in my own world. I'm in my head. And I'm just thinking about the game, thinking about my assignments, and just listening to the music. And I just slowly like morph. I like morph into this another, another human That's only, the only vision is like this game. The only vision is my position. The only vision is my responsibilities. And who, and it's just like you transform and there's a nap and you take a nap and then you get back up and you wake up and then the specialists are getting their stuff together. Meanwhile, there's like this vibrating music coming from like the community speakers and you know, everybody's doing their thing and you're just looking at everybody. And before you know it, it's like, it's time to strap up. And so you put your pads on and you know, you get locked in and you go out to the, to the field and you walk out of the locker room. And I remember the way the cleats felt on the ground, on the concrete. I remember the way they felt on the track. I remember the feeling of the air. I remember the scent of the air. And then once you put that first step on the grass and you're like, okay, it's like, it's almost like you take a step under that grass and it's like this new energy folds over you and you just have this like, Vibe, you have these vibes that are just flowing through you. And then before you know it, you're like, you're hitting, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're drilling. And then you go back in and you got this nice lather and you go back in and you just wait and they're getting the game started. They're going through all their pregame stuff. And then now it's like, okay, it's time to go. And then you run out and it's just like, you hear the crowd, you hear the band, you know, you start vibing to the van and then the kickoff happens and then the game's over. And that whole time, from the kickoff until the the scoreboard is zero zero, it's like you don't remember it, but you experience it happening. It's like it's like you left 
you left your human body, went to this like football body and you played this game and then you come back and you're like running off the field. And no matter if you won or lost, you're still dog tired. And you remember how each, you know, you remember how it feels. You remember getting back in. You remember how it felt after a loss. But the time between the kick running onto the field and running off the field at the end of the game, you don't remember it. Like, I don't remember, but I remember, like, scenes, like a glimpse. Like, if, let's say, here's an example of what it was like. If you watch any given Sunday and it's there's, like, a camera and it's kind of blurry while they're, like, transitioning, that's what it's like. That's what I remember. I just remember these blurs. Mm-hmm. You ever uh, have dreams about that? <clears throat> when I turned 30, it stopped. But uh, it's funny you asked me that question because, <laughs> like, two weeks ago, I had a football dream. But it was – I was now, like, a coach. I wasn't a player anymore. But, like, before 30, I was a player. And then Damn. it, like, every <clears> – <throat> Maybe once a year, it's like a vivid, like you wake up and you're like, am, am I that person? That's what's kind of crazy. Uh, but yeah, man, it was just, that's just how I felt. That's what kind of how I went through and I experienced things. And uh, once you get to the end of the road, though, when you're a senior and it's the last game and you know it's it. And luckily for me, my last game was at home, was, was you know, at the, at the home field. And it sucked because we got destroyed. We got we got killed in the playoffs and you knew it was over. Like you knew you weren't going to play football again. Luckily I was able to play like semi pro. Um, but it was different. It was, it's a different kind of, it's a different game. A lot more difficult, but it was fun. It was a fun ride while you're there, but that's, that's a little bit of a glimpse into what it's like for me when I was going through it. Uh, 13 minutes after the hour, anything you want to leave the people with? Anything, anything you'll know, be watching? You catch, did you catch up with uh, Colossus Arm and Nightwing? In the process of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Falcon and what is it called again? Winter Falcon Soldier. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yes. Yeah, man. Uh, speaking of Falcon, shout out to Braylon James on Twitter. Balling out. Go check him. Go check his Twitter out if you haven't. Uh, also, Lockhart Lady Lions softball going on tonight with. Uh, Lion Pride Sports Broadcasting. I think the Sarge is live streaming their game right now. Pretty cool to see that. I think they're in the playoffs. They're really good. Lockhart always a good, good softball team. Always. And baseball. Uh, anything you want to leave them with, James? Uh, What's going on tomorrow? Um, tomorrow, uh, Dark Side of the Mic. Yep. Check us out. 645 on our Facebook. Go you, like us. You're going to be doing all this. Other worldly stuff going on in the in the Twitterverse and outside of Man, the sports world. I've been. Um, or you are you gonna, gonna keep it PG? Oh, uh, uh, tomorrow on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, yeah. We, you know, you know, dark side. Man, we are gonna bring it. We are gonna bring it. We are gonna bring it. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, we we got some stuff lined up. Um, yeah, it's gonna be good. Just come check us out. Right on. Yeah. Be there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's been the show. We're going to get out of here. Uh, catch us back Thursday. Tomorrow, catch James on uh, Dark Side of the Mic with uh, Austin and producer Drew. Good thing I didn't say producer James. Uh, shout out to Drew. Get that crown apple, baby. Crown apple. All right, guys, we'll see you all Thursday. We're out.